Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, I want to talk about how to prepare your rig for water crossings. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, or if you've seen any of my Ozark videos, you know that we have a ton of water crossings here in Arkansas. I'm going to take a guess here, and it's probably a pretty good one, that the Ozark National Forest has more legal water crossings than maybe any other national forest, except for maybe Alaska. Uh, it, they're just everywhere. You cannot wheel in the, in the Ozarks without preparing your rig for deep water. Now, if you wheel in, you know, July and August, probably not going to have an issue with that. But, you know, we're getting into springtime now. We're getting into, you know, the wet season here. And so a lot of my videos moving forward when we're in the Ozarks, we're going to have some deep water crossings. And if you watched my uh, recent video called In Too Deep or Cold Water Run, we went through some deep water crossings on that one. And uh, that's kind of led to this video because there's one key thing of preparing your rig for deep water that I have not done yet. Uh, and I'll get to that. Now, if you are going to be wheeling in an area with potential deep water crossings, deep mud holes. I mean, the first line of defense is the obvious and probably one of the most controversial and most hated <laughs> mods that you can do on an overland rig is a snorkel. Um, man, people love to hate on these things. Uh, but you got to have it. I, I personally like the way they look, but a snorkel, you'll, you'll see so many people commenting on all the forums and Facebook groups and stuff when people bring up snorkels that a snorkel does not make your rig a submarine. Um, and that's true. Um, you know, a snorkel is actually made for dust and that's, that the, a snorkel does help with dust. But what a snorkel does is it protects water from getting in your airbox. Now, obviously we own Jeeps and of all the off-road rigs, I think the Jeeps are probably one of the better prepared vehicles for, um, for, for water crossings. They have one of the deepest fording depths from the factory at I think 30 inches. But what a snorkel does is it redirects the airflow from the factory airbox, which on Every Wrangler um, is right here in the front. Now the factory inlet is, is right here in this corner. So it is possible, you know, if you are, you may not be in water, you, know, you may not be in water deep enough to, to submerge the hood, but if you're going through a water crossing and you maybe accidentally go too fast and your bow wake breaks over your hood, which happens a lot, well, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to, you know, water can easily get up through this crack and find its way into the airbox. And if you hydro like your engine, it's game over, you're, you're done. And that is a very expensive fix if insurance and warranty won't cover it. And the odds of that happening are probably pretty slim that, that your insurance and your warranty is gonna cover. So what a snorkel does is it brings your air intake from right here at the front to up higher. I mean, on my Gladiator, it's here. On my wife's Wrangler, we've got the Rugged Ridge snorkel uh, with the low profile mount. And so her air intake is here. And I was talking to someone that stopped by here just the other day about snorkels and about the fact that she runs this one. And they asked, you know, well, you know, if you're getting water over the hood, you know, if you're that deep, you know, is this really going to help? And I can tell you, if you are in water that is actually this deep, well, you've made a horrible judgment call, like horrible. Um, you know, because you'll have a lot more issues than just your air, your air intake if you are actually in water that is this deep. Uh, so, will this protector? Yes, because most of the time when you are entering a water crossing, it's the initial entrance into the water where you're nose down and it's very possible to get the nose of the Jeep in the water. And then you, you level back out. That was very evident on a water crossing in our recent video where it was a steep 
descent into the water crossing that made me nervous. And then you, you leveled back out and popped out. So, I mean, the water was really only about this deep, but the water going into it got up to here almost. Uh, on one of the Toyotas, it went up to about here as he dove into it. So that's what a snorkel, it just protects your air box. Uh, it protects you from hydro locking. So that is number one. I mean, if you are going to do anything to protect your vehicle in water, protect the air box. Um, on a Toyota, and I, I, I can't speak for Nissans and, and some other rigs, but I know for a fact on the Toyotas, um, the, the fifth gen forerunners, fourth gen forerunners, I think second and third gen Tacomas, uh, the airbox isn't up here in the hood. The airbox is actually right here in the fender well. Uh, I mean, it's, it is right here. It is down low, and it is a little protected from, from water moving by because of the, the fender liner, but it is not a place that I would trust to, to dip my nose down in the water, especially slowly as you're you know, doing it like a water crossing like we just did without having a snorkel because it is i mean it is right down there by your tire um and that's a that's a bad place for your air intake to be so so that's what a snorkel does it just it protects your air box it keeps clean air coming in and you don't suck in the water so other than the air box what else do you need to be concerned about well next on the list is your electronics where's your alternator is it, uh, is it up high on, on all the Wranglers, on all the, the, the Gladiators? Uh, my alternator is right here. So it is here in the top of the engine bay, and there is no better place that you could have your alternator um, up here. You, on top is the best place. Now, I know other rigs, they have them you know, down low. We had an issue with a new Bronco with the, gosh, I don't want to say this wrong, the, the larger engine. Um, I don't remember the numbers. Um, 2.7, 3.7, I can't remember. But the, the Bronco with the, the bigger of the two engine options. Uh, his alternator was down low and he went through a deep mud hole and he didn't make it, he, he wasn't able to drive home because he was toast. His electronics were, were, were you know, glitching all over the place because his alternator was down low. So that's something to know where your alternator is if there's an opportunity to relocate it, I don't know if that's even a thing because uh, I don't. I, I drive a Jeep, so my alternator from the factory comes up high. Yay, Jeep! And you know, that's something to know. Where's your alternator? Where are your electronics? Again, on the Jeep, uh, PCM, right there. Obviously, battery, right there. Fuse box, right there. They're all up high. They're all going to be as protected as you possibly can from water issues uh, you know unless you're just submerged stopped yeah you know, then you've got a lot more issues anyway so know where all your electronic stuff is protecting you know, if you've got an older rig uh, protecting connections and stuff with like dielectric grease and those sort of things can definitely help um, i know people who have you know put dielectric grease on their battery terminals and um, in different connector places and that sort of thing so uh, that's something to think about this is going to vary depending on your rig. So Jeeps, JKs, JLs, JTs, electronics, you're good. Uh, you're you're, you're going to be okay. Up next, and this is the area that I've got to address today, and we'll, uh, I'll show you how I'm doing that, is your breather tubes, your differentials, both front and rear. Even if you have a IFS vehicle, you still have a front differential. Um, so front and rear differentials have vent tubes that allow, as you know, heat builds up in the differential, it uh, builds up pressure, that pressure that uh, you know, has got to have a place to go. So there are vent tubes for the differentials. Uh, on Jeeps, um, they are routed right up here at the top of the shock tower. Now, the issue I had was I was in water deeper than my shock tower. And so I think because of that, because I had not relocated my differential breather on the front, um, I, I did get water in my diff. And I showed that in my last video um, when I put on a different diff cover, there was a little bit of water in there, it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't like just 
did, a lot of water didn't get come in, but enough to make the, the oil kind of that milkshakey, you know, color. And that's, that's not ideal. So um, I'm gonna reroute that. Other differentials that you need to worry about, obviously the rear differential. Um, the, the JLs and JTs have a special valve on them that I'll show you that uh, is supposed to do really well at not letting water in. And it actually sits down low on the frame, but um, I, I've checked my rear diff several times. Zero water has gotten in and it has been above that valve plenty of times. So I, I feel good about that. I am going to reroute that just because I can and it's easy to do and show you how to do it because the older JKs um, and TJs um, probably, I, I don't know about Toyotas, what kind of valves they have, but those are critical to, to, to reroute and to extend. So we're gonna extend the breathers on that. The other thing is transmission. Your transmission also have a, has a breather. Uh, yay for Jeep, because on the JLs and JTs, the transmission breather is right up here under the engine cover. It's right there on top of the engine. So yay for that. On the JKs, it is also right up there on top of the engine. So you don't have to worry about rerouting those. Transfer case also has a breather. On the JKs, the transfer case is routed right up here, just like, excuse me, on the JKs with the 3.6 liter Pinastar, so 2012 and up, the JK transfer case is routed right up here next to the transmission line at the top of the engine. The JLs and JTs are just a little short um, hose on top of the transfer case that has that special valve, uh, like that's on the rear differential. That is, unless you have little tiny child hands to be able to reach up in there and get it, which I do not, um, that's a very difficult one to extend on, on the JLs and JTs. That's, uh, that, that's not something I, I can't do. You have to actually drop the transfer case to be able to access that. Based on what I've seen with the rear differential and that, um, that little breather uh, cap that's on there, I, I'm very confident that I'm not gonna have an issue with that. So I'm not gonna drop the transfer case and, and deal with that. I haven't heard of anyone with a JL or JT that have had issues with water in their transfer case. So I'm gonna go with that. But if you know you got an older vehicle and you know a different brand and it doesn't have one of those little special fancy valves, transfer case is something you really want to look at extending if it's not already. Um, let's get into how to extend these uh, differential lines. And let me let me walk you through that. So looking here on top of the front differential. This right here is the, the breather line, and it is connected to this hose. It's got a little padding on it, but that is the breather line. And it runs right up here along the shock tower, and it ends right, uh, let me pull it out. And it ends right there. So that's not very high. It's higher than the rear, but it's not very high. So let me show you the rear. Here, on top of the, the axle tube here, this is your rear breather. And it goes up and comes right, ready to go. It is right here on top of the frame, right there. You can't see it, I'll have to pull it out in a minute, but it is right there on top of the frame. So it is actually, I mean, it is actually right here in line with the top of my tire. So that's, that's not very deep at all. And I frequently go through water crossings where water is over the top of my tire. So just, just it has a special valve, but what I'm gonna do is reroute that and actually put it up here in my taillight. So let's get that going. So what you're gonna need to extend your differential breathers um, is, is not hard at all. They make, there's companies that make kits for it that are like stupid expensive. Don't, don't do that. Uh, what you're gonna need is just some fuel line. This is 3 8 inch internal fuel line. Um, I've got about 15 feet of it here just cause I wanna make sure I had, had plenty. Uh, so there's about 15 feet of fuel line here. I'll, I'll let you know, we'll, we'll, we'll measure it when we, um, when we 
do it and see just how much uh, we need. So fit about 15 foot of 3 8 inch internal, which I think this is a 5 8 external, but I know for sure 3 8 internal. You're gonna need a couple uh, just barb fittings. Um, they make plastic ones. I happen to get metal ones because that's all they had at my auto parts store. You're gonna need some, um, some little hose clamps just to make sure everything stays on. Um, I got the little pinchy ones. You are going to need uh, some, some zip ties because we're gonna zip tie this up at the top of the engine bay. And a pair of pliers just to squeeze the little clamps. Uh, some, some cutters for the zip ties and either a big pair of scissors or just a you know, razor blade to cut the hose. And that's, that's it. Oh, and, and one more thing, a uh, uh, trim pry tool helps to get some of the, um, some of the frame mounts pop loose. So let, let's get going. All right, so the front has this little clamp here that pulls off very easily. And then you can get that. And then this is right there. I think I can access that better from the top. All right, I'm gonna try to point this out to you. I don't know how well it's gonna focus, but you can see the, the top of the breather cap right there. And it is secured with, a, with just a little clip there. I'm gonna try to pry that off. All right, I got it. I ended up just using some wire snips because they're not gonna reuse that, that piece. So this is, the, this is the little valve here on the top. This is what comes on the older JKs and I think TJ's probably too. But it's just this little valve. It just pops up and down. Water can easily get in there. So there we go. Got that pulled out. And let's, uh, let's reroute it. I'm going to take the hose and route it down because it's easier to do that than to try to push it up. So I'm going to tuck it here in this corner. And just on the other side of these hoses right here in the corner. And then down to the back side here where I can grab it from the fender well. All right, here's this side of this. So I'm gonna take a, a clamp and slide that on there. And I'm gonna take another one and slide it on this one. There we go. Then I'll take my barb fitting. And it's good to, you know, lube this. I just, look at, I just put it in my mouth. There we go. Pull that up here. Done. Put a little spit on it. And do this side. Then scooch this down. Oops. There we go. All right, and there, there's the extension. So I'm gonna stick this back in there. Kind of route it where it used to be. Put that little clamp there. And then I'm gonna pull it up here and zip tie it. Then from here, I'm just making sure this isn't, you know, sitting on anything. And making sure it comes up here out of the way. It's not gonna contact anything. And then I'm gonna, just put a big zip tie. Right here at the top. Bingo. Then I'm just gonna cut this off right here. get the fitting that, that came off of it. And just push that down in there. And I'm gonna take this and tuck it right through here. Boom. So there's my new breather location for my front diff. 
um, unless I do something really stupid and get stuck in like a river, um, no water's getting in there. So that, that's going to be awesome. The rear's just a little more challenging because you actually have to crawl under the Jeep and with my big old 38 inch spare tire under there, it's a little tight. But I'm going to start by popping out the tail light. go and then I'm going to go ahead and run my my new hose down there because again it's easier to to start it going down than it is to try to push it up from the bottom there it goes I don't know that I can actually do this under here with the camera so breather tube it runs right there it's uh, attached to the frame there and there and here's the little valve piece i don't know if you can see that but it's right there i'm gonna take my little um, frame popper trim piece things and pull that down fun part about this is big spare tire and it's really dirty under here so Best to do this when you have a brand new rig because then you don't get dirt in your eye. Probably should be wearing protective eye coverings right now, but I'm not. So, <clears throat> got it, got it. All right, so this is that fancy little cap. It's, uh, it says gore on the front of it. So I don't know what kind of magic takes place in here, but you can't, you can't suck anything out of it. Like if you tried, I don't know how it works, but it lets it vent, but no water. I can't suck air through here. So no water's getting in. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to reroute it up here just because uh, it's easy and I can't. Okay, I'm just doing exactly what I did on the front and connecting these two together. I am gonna route this, you know, how I want it to go. Like I said, do this before you get it all dirty. It makes life a lot easier. That's rough. There we go. So, fitting clamp there, barb there, now I just got to pull it up and zip tie everything uh oh oh i did a dummy i did a real dumb thing i didn't put it there hold on easier to take this one off and reroute it there we go there easy bingo all right so now I want to put that one fitting back to where it came from. Make sure I've got plenty of... There we go. I want to make sure I have plenty of slack here for, you know, when I'm articulating and stuff that I don't pull it off. That would be bad. Zip tie this one up here to the frame. All right, now I just need to cut this and I'm gonna zip tie it to this existing little wire loom connection there, which will be super easy.
Then we'll take this fitting, put it there, and then that'll just sit right there. So, I mean, theoretically, I would have to be in water this deep in order to get water in my, my rear diff now. And that's not gonna happen. It's, I'm not gonna be that stupid. So, yay for that. Now, just put this back together. So there, um, I mean, extending your, your differentials just that easy. And as far as leftovers go, I said I started with, with about 15 feet and I probably got uh, nine left over. So I think if you, I think if you start with 10 feet, um, de depending on your vehicle, um, I, I could have got away with, with a lot less hose. But I got extra, so if anybody's in, you know, need some hose, and you need to, well, I'm going to do cares too. So, no, never mind. You can't have this. Because uh, I won't need it for cares. Um, but really, I mean, it's just that easy. And it's, it's cheap insurance. Don't, just, just DIY it like this. It's so much easier than buying the little kit things. And they're, they're more expensive. And this is, this is simple. So, don't, don't buy the kits. Don't waste your money. DIY it. But uh, anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I missed anything. If you've got a rig that uh, I, I missed some things on you know, that have other you know, water fording issues that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments because I don't know every rig. Um, so let, let me know. But I hope, I hope this was helpful. Uh, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. If you're not, please, I, we got a goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers this year. We just crossed 70,000 uh, yesterday from when I'm making this video. So big milestone there. Yay for that. Um, but we want to hit 100 before the end of 2023. So be sure you're subscribed. Check out our Patreon if you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel. Gain access to special content and events and all of our GPS data. There's a link in the description. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, like our newest uh, Be an Outsider t-shirts, uh, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.